I never left you. I watch you every day. I'm always very near. I know deep in your heart you realize I'm here. I watch you while you sleep in your bed at home. I hear when you speak to me when you are on your own. You cannot understand the reason why I have gone, but I will never leave you. I'm there to keep you strong. Talk to me. I hear you, though you'll not see. We share an unbroken bond that will always be. Death won't keep us apart, for our love is forever. Just remember me in your heart, and one day we will be together. Live your life and live it full. Don't waste a single day. Remember, I am with you. Remember, I am always with you. Every step of the way, bait man. I never left you. He was, he was my favorite dog, so I don't know why, but... But yeah, it, it's, it's hard because I don't know, it's just when he, when he was there, you don't think about it, but when he was gone, it just really hurts. And it's hard to get over it because, you know, he's not there. And even though I deal with it, it's hard to cope with it. So it's, it's just always good to try to re remember what's there, but I understand it's tough, so. So, so do your best. Hey guys, this is Travis and Kyle Bailitz with BeyondBipolarBlog.com. So today is a unique video, not per se a different video, just a special occasion because this past weekend one of our rabbits had passed away. And what makes it special is this is the last of our four rabbits that we have been taking care of. Actually, we had six rabbits, but we had two that we had put up for adoption, and the last four had died in within the last year, year and a half. And just so happened, the last one died of 10 years. Rabbits can live seven to 10 years. Sometimes even longer. Anyways, this got me thinking on what I have to think about when it comes to trying to deal with loss and how I can kind of give back and provide feedback for other people that have dealt with loss when it comes to losing a pet. Now, I just recently in June or July, I lost or we lost our dog of seven years and it hit me really, really hard. So, which is unusual because when he died right away, you didn't hit the, feel the effects. So, yeah, so I, I think it, it really wore on me and I'm for certain for people with mental health issues or especially those with bipolar disorder like me, losing a pet can really wear on you and can make you very, very depressed and down and you'll miss them a lot and the grief is so bad that you just don't want to do anything. You're so down, you don't want to get up and do the things that need to get done, chores, get out and about deal with friends, deal with work, things like that. And I understand I was at that point and it was difficult, but since I'm in a better position now, I figured this is the best point in which I could kind of provide 10 points. I came up with 10 points, give and take on things that I have dealt with on how I can deal with and cope with loss. Number one, way to deal with loss of a pet is radical acceptance. This is the one thing that is taught in dialectical behavioral therapy, DBT, is radical acceptance. And no matter what ifs, and or buts, the thing is, is that you just have to radically accept it. Death is, that is, death is basically a part of life and like Kyle said, it is harder said than done, and I understand that for the most part, just being able to get to the point where you can get yourself to accept the fact is a really good starting point, and to put yourself in that position is where you need to start at, and to get yourself to radically accept the fact that death is a part of life, uh, you can start to begin the healing process. Is there anything else you want to add to that? Basically, uh, what did they teach you how to accept in DBT? Could you add a little bit more detail? See, the on problem that? I never is, went to, the problem is with remember. radical acceptance is that 
It is if and or no ifs and or buts. You could just gotta accept it. No matter if it's good or bad, you just have to accept the fact that it happened. Nothing you, you can change. Nothing it. you can do. You can't change the past. You can't change the event. You just have to accept it. And some people have a very very hard time dealing with it. Like for me, there's this thing called like cycling. Uh, what is it Rapid called cycling. when you're it's it's what is it called like a r broken record you repeat the same thing over and over like in dbt they call it broken record where you relive the same instance over and over you repeat it back and forth and it's very very difficult unless you can radically accept the fact that something is going on uh to move forward unless you radically accept the fact that death or whatever subject that you're event that you're having you just have to get to yourself to a place where you know it happened it's in the past but you just have to accept it and number two you have to allow yourself to grieve and I think this is very important uh, for the most part I feel like people just don't give themselves time to grieve from the very beginning I feel like when it comes to death, they just kind of hide their feelings and they don't give themselves a chance to deal with it and cope with it. I mean, everyone's busy with their lives, they're busy with their job, they're busy with their family and their friends, uh, their life responsibilities and things like that. Uh, when you felt the loss of Loppy, did, did you allow yourself to grieve? Kyle, I feel like it or... just came on because I'm actually even really sad right now thinking about Tipsy because that was our last rabbit and it's just really sad because I just have the really good memories when I first got them because I just thought they were really cute and I guess I'm also relieved as well that I know they're in a better place right now because towards the end of life they weren't living a really good life. I mean I felt really bad because Tipsy was by herself and I'm going back and forth to my girlfriend's house which is pretty far and I couldn't give her and much love and attention so unfortunately she pretty much died alone by herself uh we actually found her in the back uh in the back right there maybe digging for food because i think she lost her her sense of sight but i wanted to add more to allowing yourself to grieve it's important to think hard about it because when you push things in the back of the mind it may lead to another unhealthy behavior sometimes it could lead to irritability but and denial but you really have to allow yourself to feel the loss and when you allow yourself to feel the loss it can feel bad at first but then eventually that's how it allows you to heal it's kind of it's i kind of resemble it to not just experiencing death of a loved one but also going through a breakup you have to i've been watching videos about that you actually have to allow yourself to feel sad you can't bottle it up, put in it behind alcohol or, or drugs, because that will just only make it worse. You have to allow yourself to be sad. And unfortunately, much like radical acceptance, you have to accept these sad feelings and allow yourself to, to feel those feelings. If you can't feel it, maybe I suggest writing a journal or something like that. Just that actually brings me to step three, having a creative outlet. I think one of the things that when it comes to allowing yourself to heal, to allow yourself to uh, express these feelings is to having a creative outlet, whether it's art or music. For me, I do a lot of poetry. I write a lot in my journals. I write a lot of notes. I write a lot into my phone or whatever. I, I always complain, and that's the sad part of life, is that I at least try to make something out of it. I produce music out of it because I have a very huge passion for making music and writing songs and singing, songwriting, rapping, things like that. And I feel like that has helped me cope the most with loss. And I feel like Kyle can also agree with sense of, of using creative outlets. Yeah. I think this is an example of a creative outlet. Yeah, so I drew this. This is Yodi, the brunt of the litter. A good memory I have about her is we were worried that she wasn't loppy, loppy, the mom wasn't feeding her, so we actually took time to separate her from the other kids. They had four other children, and we fed them, and she's a really cute, fluffy rabbit. And like Travis said, a creative outlet is really important because it keeps your mind off things. That's why you can't see it now, but we have our whole painting stuff 
when I was going through a break of like even just recently, I just realized it's not video editing that I enjoy that much. That actually kind of makes me depressed, even like cooking too, because that kind of reminds me of too. But just like be able to sit and focus on something, keeps your mind occupied. Does it? There's actually for something you, in DBT it's soothing. called. There's something called in DBT called um, observe and describe. This is observing, which is just basically being mindful in the moment. And by focusing on the task at hand, which is doing art or writing a song or writing in a journal, things like that, you're able to express it in the now moment, and that's very present. By being in the present, that's very, very important. So that is an example of what people do when it comes to creative outlets, and that's why it's important to have. And that brings me to the next thing. What is the most important thing when it comes to dealing with loss that is having a support network especially family friends co-workers or anyone else that you have like a support group online facebook or whatever i mean you want to be more picky than not but at the same time you want to try to reach out and try to find people that you can associate with to help deal with your problems i wanted to mention about that yeah too Humans are naturally social creatures, but I find that when you're really depressed, really down, you don't want to be around people. But even me, even us, we kind of fall in that boat where we just don't want to be around people. We ignore people and don't try to spend the work to establish these relationships and keep them in contact. But like Travis says, it really is crucial. It's really important to be have friends, loved ones. Just It can be hard, can be draining, especially when everyone's sad about the loss of the pet. Maybe it's better to go outside your family circle and just friends or just hang out, go to the movies or, or something like that. But like my brother said, having a social network is extremely crucial for going through the grieving process and healing as well. Now, the one thing that has helped the most, this is, uh, this is step five or whatever, or tip five, is medication. This has helped the most because I was on Capilita for a good year and it was just totally not working anymore. I mean, even after like six, six months, it was starting to not work. And I was getting miserable, depressed, very unmotivated, very catonic, not wanting to do anything, very lifeless, very hopeless. And that was what was pretty miserable. It wasn't until I changed medications for I was on Raylar, Lavalby, and a lot of people don't like going this road. They want to kind of go the natural road. They don't want to try medication. But for those that have had bipolar disorder like me with such a severe case, we've tried 30 medications over and maybe nine antipsychotics or 10, which I am on currently Libalvi. I'm at a point where I can tell you that medications can definitely help relieve the problem. Do you agree? I agree. Sometimes it is a tricky trying to go the med route because there's always the, the weight gain, which you gain weight. Yeah, unfortunately. And but maybe you can tell them why. See, the it's thing is, it really sucks because I know that antipsychotics and some antidepressants and some other meds can cause weight gain. And unfortunately, you got to kind of weigh a pros and cons list. And it's unfortunate because it makes me feel a lot better. I'm more motivated. I feel more satisfied in life. But at the same time, it it's very hard to kind of keep the weight maintainable without being extremely, extremely uh, active. And I had to be extremely active to kind of maintain what I want. And yeah, I'm way more active than what more people can usually tolerate or they want to do. But at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed for how much effort I put in. I'm still kind of not at a point where I want to be at. But at the same time, at least you're hey, alive. At least I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat satisfied in life and yeah, I kind of kick myself in the ass for it, but at the same time, at least I'm not like super, super sad over the loss of the dog. And it's already the dying. holidays too, and you haven't been needing to go to the hospital. Yeah, so the holidays common. are coming too. The holidays already did come. Well, true, and I'm doing It's already well. the seventh. It's almost Christmas next week already. Yeah, so usually the holidays are pretty tough on me, and I think the medications can definitely help in the long run. So you talked about the medications. How did the the treatment go the shock treatment oh so yeah there's also another option is is 
like medications or any type of uh, medical route, which is TMS, which is transcranial, transcranial magnetic, therapy. magnetic stimulation therapy. And that is just basically using like stimulates the the brain, the brain itself, and I think that helped a lot. I'm no longer on the antidepressant thing, to God. So I think that's reasonably pretty well. I mean, I've done a few videos on that, and you can take a look at some of the videos. Just search up TMS, and you'll see a review on that as well. Another one is memories. Remembrance, memories, and memorial. You always want to not focus on the negative and the loss. The death, the loss. You want to focus on the memories made. And why is that crucial? Because if you focus on the death, you're just going to think about how much you missed the pet. I think but if you f can focus on the things that it gave you joy, it's very, very hard to do. But at the same time, if you can try to think, reverse that stinking thinking to think that how much joy it gave you, it'll at least alleviate some of the pain that you had because you know it gave you a lot of life. Another uh, peace of mind that I feel like, especially if you're a pet owner, only pet owners can understand the love that they have for their pets. And for the most part, even though it's sad and grieving losing a pet, that for the most part, you can find solace that you gave them a life that, uh, a good life, you took well, good care of them. And that's why I'm actually proud of, of Loppy, Wilford, Tipsy, and, and Yodi, and Whitey and PJ, that we actually took care of them for so long. My brother actually has been doing most, at least most of the work towards the end. Is there any, the case, is there any specific hours, memories, but, memories you have over like, that? Like, but, I do remember my favorite memory of my rabbits, and we could probably post a little bit of editing videos. And we do have a, we did have a rabbit channel called Rabbitat Habitat, uh, R-A-B-B-I-T-A-T, H A B B I T A T Habitat YouTube channel and I remember the most is when they were babies. That's when they were the most cutest. Um, but what actually probably made me closest to unfortunately I wasn't very close to Tipsy, neither was Travis. She's kind of a mean reserved rabbit. But Wolford and Loppy and Yodi, they were Yodi was just really sweet, cute. She's kinda of dumb but really cute and fluffy. But Loppy was the smartest one and for some reason I feel like she was the most human, and I remember whenever I would eat apples, she would come out of her cage and grab apples from my hand, and that just, that's why I just grieved the loss, is uh, she, I just developed that really close bond her. My brother doesn't remember, but he did chill with Loppy, I chose Wilford. Wilford was just a cute grump, uh, he was just a good rabbit, the memories towards the end kind of got bad because he did have seizures and stuff. Same, Same with, with uh, Loppy. No, Tip, or, tip, tip uh, no. Uh, uh, Yodi, Yodi, and that was hard to live with. Uh, Loppy was just the first one to go, and that surprised me because we were going to Mexico a couple of years ago in February, and I heard some noise, and I was down here, and I actually was there for her death. Uh, we were there for Wilford as well. Yodi, she was, died, unfortunately, outside, and Tipsy, we weren't there but maybe we were there pretty close because her body was still warm but oh those are the negative memories a little bit but like i said try to defeat the the negative thinking stinking thinking that uh that you did take good care of them you, they had a very good life and keep pictures keep pictures i mean if you have pictures print them out put them in frames or, or videos or videos do a video edit of them or write a song about them oh. or so basically, I don't know what Kyle's doing, but basically you can video edit, you can write a song, you can do a memorial. See, this is what I did of Bateman, is actually I, 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 I bought this on a, a print site for the dog, a memorial, and I'd also put fake flowers or real flowers above the frame as a memorial. It just basically says, can you read it all, Kyle? I never left you. I watch you every day. I'm always very near. I know deep in your heart you realize I'm here. I watch you while you sleep in your bed at home. I hear when you speak to me when you are on your own. You cannot understand the reason why I have gone, but I will never leave you. I'm there to keep you strong. Talk to me. I hear you, though you'll not see. We share an unbroken bond that will always be. Death won't keep us apart, for our love is forever. Just remember me in your heart. 
and one day we will be together. Live your life and live it full. Don't waste a single day. Remember, I am with you. Remember, I'm always with you. Every step of the way, bait man. I never left you. He was, he was my favorite dog, so I don't know why, but but yeah, it, it's, it's hard because I don't know. It's just when he when he was there, you don't think about it, but when he was gone, it just really hurts, and it's hard to get over it because you know he's not there. And even though I deal with it, it's hard to cope with it. So it's, it's just always good to try to re remember what's there. But I understand it's tough, so, so, so do your best. I mean, it's really hard, and I, I don't know what else to do about it because even I struggle with it. But What makes you sad most about Bay, man? Just because you know, just when you know that you love someone so much. Why do you feel like you love him so much, though? Because he's just so innocent. It's just something about him that, that, I don't know, it just... Maybe you want to explain, oh yeah, the next step. Sometimes then, you don't know, you just, you just want to memorialize him and you do your best Does it best remind you of it. dad or, or, or no, just no, the dog just, in general? Just the dog in general. Like he was there for you when you are yeah, bipolar? Or, maybe, because I hate to say it, like, I had a girlfriend in 2018 and I kind of got... That was my last relationship seven and a half years ago, and I got close to him, and and uh, yeah, ever since then he was my favorite dog, Dossal. Always came up for licks, he's whether smart. you're in the bathroom or always jumps on the bed and bark when you barks. I mean, he had issues with thyroid. With thyroid. Oh no, uh, blat. Uh, uh, was it the bladder? No, stomach. No, not intestine. No, the. Cancer. I think it was a bladder, actually, I believe. But, uh, but yeah, so he had issues, and he died at 7, so unfortunately that's why it hit me hard, because he didn't live a good life. Unlike the rabbits, they can live 7 to 12 years, but this... Tipsy lived longer than he lived, Bateman. He lived, yeah, unfortunately, the rabbit lived 10 years. Which is unusual. Bateman lived only 7, so... That's what's... And the next thing, that leads to... Thing, take it or leave it, is to have faith. And whether that's God, Buddha, a higher power, or having just faith, being positive, having faith in yourself, that's so important, guys. Um, it's hard to say that, like, I'm not a huge believer in God. I'm not very religious, but I do often try to meditate and have some belief that there's something good out there for me. And try to believe that there's a higher power that loves me and I can rely on and things like that. I mean, do you have any thing to add when it comes to faith and God or is it something that I just mean, even though we grew up very religious, I felt like you and I didn't have that relationship as close to God as some other people in Jesus. Yeah. But whether you believe in that or not, there are some negatives about religion because a lot of it in the past it was to me more a way to control and they pretty much uh, uh, is a, like a, a religious war pretty much and they pretty much uh, sabotage like the, all the Native Americans and their beliefs so it kind of came from bad blood but if you look past that sometimes when you look at the Bible it does have meaning whether you believe it fully or not there's always a good moral lesson beneath it and with that it really is important to have a strong inner faith that to believe that there's b better things out there that that even though if Bayman died uh, uh, you can talk about the next topic right yep. now that brings me down from faith to <coughs> what do you do to get over a dog that passed a new one get a new one this cute little guy I always wanted a palm tetter he's tot. so sweet very He's sweet. Just bad. I always wanted to pop. <laughs> he he just goes to the bathroom everywhere, unfortunately, and you're always stepping in poop. And is he bait man? So he's no bait man, but he's definitely a really highly energetic. He's he's definitely a very good distraction. Do you feel like uh, so uh, this he's is no bait man replacement, but he's a good? Do you feel like this he distracts you from the holidays, or is that why the holidays have been a little better? Actually, I think that's why, is because he's he's so close to me that. Do you get? That, do you feel like? 
when I'm away at Nancy's house long periods that it helps from loneliness or yeah, he's, oh. he's such a good distraction guys if, if you're able to move on and get a new pet and and maybe an apartment allows you to have one uh, and you're able to have an apartment where you can actually have a su an emotional support animal a pet is such a great thing to have uh, you realize that if you don't deal with humans very well or not in a relationship or things like that you can always trust a loyal dog and a cat while well, they're kind of not so well to me they're not so great <laughs> but why don't you we've like been cats? watching why don't you stand off like, in the meme but yeah. i've been watching a lot of marmots and and poppy the prairie dog is one of them i'm just loving those things and squirrels so we but, definitely are pet lovers yeah we dub animals the number nine is self-care. And we want to talk about self-care like we did earlier is pretty much work out, you guys, right? Yep. Go to the gym. And there is scientific evidence when you perspirate and lift up your heart and do something like a, uh, that kind of puts your physical, it challenges yourself. It kind of releases, I don't know, I want to say maybe endorphins and whatnot, and you end up feeling better. And let alone you always look better. I don't regret going to the gym. We started our fit. We always been fitness buff. I mean, even back then, we just kind of uh, lost it uh, uh, in the t 2010s. But we plan never letting go of the gym. I mean, you almost want to let go of the gym when you're really sick. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I was, see, I maybe was you can describe why the gym and, and fitness is so important. So, here. guys, self care and health go hand in hand. Getting endorphins going is so important. Physical health. Getting is mental exercise health. is basically uh, another way to uh, combat depression and connect as a pill. It's, it's important to, to get enough sleep as well. And sleep is very beneficial as well. And if you can't, medications can also go hand in hand to help with that. And if not, avoid alcohol and drugs. So being on a clean diet, taking care of yourself, things like that, it's so important to do. And meditate. Uh, uh, meditation is another form of self care. So, all these self care things is very important. And this leads to number 10, which is time. Time is of essence. Time is your best friend. Uh, everyone wants to want to be in a hurry, hurry, hurry. And you want to get over the pain, the pain, the pain. But no matter what, time will heal. And it's hard to say. Even I cry, and it's hard to get over. But were you, I don't know. Were you surprised that you still cried about Bateman, or you thought that you actually would? Well, I don't know. I wasn't sure. I guess when you were speaking about it, and then it just kind of brought text. on an overwhelming feeling. But, but yeah, guys, I don't have much faith in God, but I do believe animals are a God's best friend. And Man's with best time, friend. it can definitely help, and getting a new pet really helps. That kind of relates to relationships, too. You feel like it's the death of Eventually, you can probably just look at the picture. You still feel sad, but hopefully, it isn't as intense. And just that's just what it is. I mean, if you can't radically accept, just it's okay. It's okay to feel these negative feelings. That means that you're actually human, and it's good because it allows you to be a better human, and it helps you appreciate life, and through death, ironically, and it can be kind of healing in a weird way because it made it forces you to appreciate the life that we got now, this one life, and this is the life you got, so don't waste it. Go for it and uh, love hard and work hard and take care of yourself. And, uh, and that's towards the end of the video, I believe so. Yep, so there are 10 steps that you can do to cope with death it's radical acceptance one two allow yourself to grieve three finding creative outlets four finding a support network five medication six memorial remembrance and memory seven faith eight new pet nine self-care and ten time there's anything else you want to add i think this was a really great topic travis i'm actually really surprised that you came up with these i'm actually really glad he did this this fits a really perfect time and this is going to be probably after teddy's yeah. Uh, video which won't be released till it in March or something before I do want to release that haul if I want, but I got to finish that commercial but that's on another subject but anyway 
I think this is a really great topic. I didn't realize there was still more topics to talk about, and this was just very awesome. And uh, and I want to say goodbye to you, Bateman and Loppy, Wilfred, Yodi, and Tipsy, and I and look forward to finally Whitey and Whitey and PJ. But PJ. I don't know about them. I'm yeah. pretty sure they passed long gone. I kind of regret giving them away, but anyway. Uh, I look forward to bury them in the spring finally. We've been having them in the freezer, and we just wanted to weigh it. I just want to build them a small casket and, and bury them. It was 10 years of our life. Uh, around that time, I was going through kind of a breakup around that too. So I just think about that. Like Sometimes you just feel sad because the animals are so loyal yeah. and always there. And then once they're gone, and sometimes you don't appreciate it. Another thing, through Bateman's death, what did you learn that you wanted to work it made you want to become a better person. Why? Because you wanted to get a job for Teddy, or maybe you can explain that Well, the that thing quickly. is, I've always felt kind of guilty about not working, and getting Teddy kind of threw me over to the fact that, hey, I got this dog. I always wanted a Pomeranian. I was the one that got it, and being so guilty on how much it costs uh, Bateman to get the exams for him to have cancer, it was like $5,000 bill for for vets and I was kind of guilty and I wanted to save some money up in case I know I always get support from my dad to financially support but I want to save some money up just in case if he gets really sick because this dog can live 16 years and I want to make sure he can live as long as he can. if he has cancer then yeah. you don't want to that big bill but yeah, that's been that really pushing you so through a bad thing maybe it, it gives me better. purpose in the end so it does have some benefit. So it motivated you and All right. trains you. All right, this is Kyle and Travis. Can you say please? This is Travis and Kyle with BeyondMyPolarBlog.com. Please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button for future videos. By the way, there's this video called Life is Meaningless and Want to Die response video that has like maybe 17,000 uh, views. And I that's a like positive video. Someone suggested that I, or someone said that I was like the Asian Andrew Tate, and I don't think so, but... I do feel like maybe I need to do some more motivational speeches or inspirational words uh, for other people struggling with mental health issues. So I figured I might as well try to do more of these topics to kind of... Uh, you know what you should do? What? The, your, the next one should be some sort of motivation poem or something about work, job in general, to keep going, keep striving or something. Okay, Kyle that thinks I should do another video on motivation to keep going when it comes to work, work and stuff. So we'll see. All right, take care. Have a good one. Bye. Say bye, Teddy. Bye. Bye. Happy holidays. Anyways, this is just a shameless plug, but I produce music. I have over 270 tracks, including songs, instrumentals, and beats. These are two physical albums. One is a piano album right here, and the other one is an orchestral album. The piano album has 17 tracks. The orchestral album has 19 tracks. They're on sale for five bucks a piece or eight dollars for both of them. These are really original. I know not a lot of people have CDs, but it'd be great for any donations if you want to buy them. What makes it personal is that the original art is by a colony. One is a graphic art, and the other one is acrylic artwork that Kyle and I done together. Anyways. That ties something else, which I also do art, so I do hyper-realistic artwork. As you can see here, just some examples. And I do airbrush portraits, and as I said before, I do abstract acrylic work that I often do sometimes with my book. But anyways, please go to lift.bio slash monopark. Once again, it's L-I-F-T dot bio slash monopark, O-P-R-K. So please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button. Take care. Have a good one. Bye. Onion Hasio. Hello. This is Travis and Kyle. We are both artists and we focus on hyper realistic drawings, acrylic work, airbrush work. So I also wanted to mention that we actually have our own channel as well. Our channel is Korean Adoptee Stories and we interview a lot of adoptees. Uh, we found that with adoption, there's quite a few adoptees that struggled, unfortunately, and did not have the best kind of life, and a lot of them had mental health issues. We felt like it was important because us, we can kind of struggle with that. 